Hey, this is Nat, and we're off our couch here at Epcot and Walt Disney World in Florida. Uh, this is just our second time at Epcot since we became pass holders. Our last trip was to the Epcot International Festival of the Arts last year in 2020. Uh, one of our first outings we filmed for the channel, and the link to that video is in the description box. So we're really happy to be back, and it's time for the International Food and Wine Festival two of my favorite things so I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy this and we're picking up a festival guide which gives you all the details concerning the entertainment activities and food available during this festival um, we failed to designate a paycheck to be used for this festival <laughs> so we're going to be picking up just a few items to try as we go along uh, and here's Pluto and Goofy. It's always fun when you get to see characters right away, get those memorable pictures in as soon as you get to the park. And um, this is a really exciting day also because as pass holders, we get to ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure early. It officially opens October 1st as part of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration. So it's really exciting to be getting a sneak peek at the ride. But first we came hungry, so we're going to look for something to try at the Food and Wine Festival. Uh, plus our reservation to ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is until 4, so we have some time to meander around. So we're going to hop on the boat to get to the World Showcase. While we wait, we're looking at the fish in the water, and um, they're pretty inactive today. Uh, must be a lazy day, no judgment here. So on the boat, we get some water views and views of Epcot. And once we're off the boat, we make our way over to Japan for our first snack at the Food and Wine Festival. If you don't know already, the World Showcase at Epcot features 11 country-themed areas. And I find Japan absolutely beautiful, incredibly picturesque. Uh, there's a lot of different foods we want to try, and Japan is a must during this festival. The kids really want to try the teriyaki chicken bun for $6.50. It's a steamed bun with chicken, vegetables, and teriyaki sauce. And the kids have been watching their favorite characters from their favorite animes eating these, so they really want to try them. And they love the buns. I wasn't sure if my daughter would go for these since I, I wasn't sure about the vegetables. Um, she's really only down with broccoli. <laughs> but the vegetables aren't dominant, the taste or the texture. And it tastes really sweet, the bun does, in my opinion. And I love how portable they are too because the little bit of time we had before it was time to check in for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is done. Uh, it's time to leave Japan and head to France to ride Epcot's newest ride. As we hustle over to France, we pass Princess Aurora, Sleeping Beauty. Um, so as pass holders, we have the opportunity to ride this before it officially opens on October 1st, which is the start of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration. I was talking to some other pass holders who have been pass holders longer than we have, and they were telling us how they got to visit Pandora, the world of Avatar, prior to its official opening. So it sounds like this is a perk Disney gives from time to time. Uh, this is just our second year as pass holders, so this is our first Disney special event. So we scanned our annual annual passes and we're in now. Uh, this is a great look of the Skyliners from here. So we're making our way to the right now. Merchandise is to the left and then there's food to the right. And we're going straight ahead to get on the ride and we came educated. <laughs> we watched Ratatouille this week because the movie came out in 2007 before both my kids were even born. So they never even heard of it. Uh, Lund and I don't remember it, so we all watched it. Uh, all of us enjoyed it, and we're looking forward to experiencing the ride now. As always at Disney, the theming for the ride is extraordinary. Uh, elements from the movie just come into life in front of our eyes. And some of these areas have a lot of details, a lot to look at. Uh, so we're grabbing our 3D glasses. The sign outside the attraction calls this a 3D adventure. Uh, the website calls it 4D, so maybe they did some updates, some upgrades. <laughs> and as we board our rat cars, I'm not sure what the official name of these are. Uh, it's definitely a 4D ride. All the elements are here. Uh, there's wetness from the mops slinging around heat from the oven. It's an exciting ride. It feels like you're going around in all different directions. Um, you're moving down, going backwards, and you can see the other riders too, which I think is really cool. When I spoke with the other pass holders, uh, and London felt this way too, uh, they felt like the ride is kind of short. I personally feel it's a decent length. It didn't feel short to me. Uh, all of us agreed it's a cute ride and really fun. So if you've already ridden it, or when you do ride it, you know, let us know what you think. 
After exiting the attraction, there's the motorcycle and the scooter from the movie. A really fun and awesome photo opportunity, and I like how they're both here. I took a picture with my son on the scooter and my daughter on the motorcycle, and it looks cool. It looks like they're actually in the action. Uh, it's a really great photo opportunity. Behind us is the fountain, and there's so much detail to this fountain. Uh, the longer we stare at it, the more we notice. It's really interesting. Uh, but Disney always does such a great job with the theming. I mean, check this out. Uh, my son noticed it. I very rarely think to look down. Uh, it's starting to sprinkle now, and I was hoping to see the merchandise, but it's all covered up now due to the rain. And now it's raining really hard. <laughs> We're going back in the direction where we came from. And this is the traditional rainy part of our theme park visit now, I guess. Uh, we're caught in the rain again. At least we're not on a ride this time, like at SeaWorld. Uh, so we're passing the Japan booth right now, and it's closed. Uh, looks like they closed the kiosk during the rain. Uh, and we are back in Japan, and we're going to take shelter and shop for toys at Misukoshi. Uh, my kids really love this store. Lots of toys and merchandise representing so many other favorite shows are here. Uh, they have some tasty candy choices here too, so London and I always end up picking up something also. Uh, I love the selection in the store. Lots of cool stuff to look at. Lots of stuff I want, uh, but I'm not shopping today. My daughter is, and after walking throughout the store, I believe my daughter has made a decision. Uh, she's adding to her Yoshi collection with a great Yoshi. So after getting the toy and some candy, uh, we need to leave this store full of enticing goods because we have more food to taste later, hopefully. Right now though, it's still raining, so we're gonna head inside to Kauai, an exhibit about Japan's cute culture. So in here, there's the Kid Cop Fun Stop, where kids can pick up a memento in each of the 11 countries represented at World Showcase in Epcot. So we have that, and now we can move into the gallery portraying Kauai, the culture of cuteness in Japan. Uh, there's a list of their supporters, and one is the Kummer Museum of Art and Gardens in Jacksonville, Florida, our hometown. A museum we love and look forward to filming the scenery and gardens there. So while we're checking out the exhibit, we can hear examples of Kauai with the songs being played. Uh, there's examples of Kauai at work and play, Kauai at home. Um, I'm being drawn in by the toilet paper. There's nothing ordinary or boring going on in this bathroom. Uh, although we do recognize some of the characters, uh, this is something new that we're learning about. Uh, I've never heard of Kauai until this day. Uh, this is a really nice exhibit, a great learning experience and a nice break from the rain or any other elements that may be going going on during your trip. So we're gonna step back outside and yes, the rain has stopped, which means the kiosks are reopening and we're hungry, so that's great. First stop for me is Spain. Now, according to our festival guide, this booth is not supposed to be open until October 1st, but they're open now and I am happy because I wanna to try the seafood salad for $6.25 and the wine flight also $6.25. So the white flight is three wines, and I'm looking forward to trying the seafood salad with these wines. So I now have both my food and wine. International Food and Wine Festival goal completed. <laughs> and even though I'm standing at a table with rainwater all over it, I, I feel kind of sophisticated with my seafood salad and flight of wines. The card gives you the name of the three wines. Um, I would call the second one, the risotto, my favorite. And the seafood salad, um, I'm glad it's making an early debut because I really like it. Uh, there's shrimp, bay scallops, and mussels. It's crunchy, it's tasty too, and it's a pretty decent size in my opinion. Uh, it's enough to satisfy me until I get to the next booth at least. <laughs> So we're making our way to Germany now and walking through the Germany Pavilion Garden Railway, which is taking us directly to Caramel Kucha. Uh, that's my best attempt <laughs> at pronouncing that, uh, but it does mean Caramel Kitchen in German, uh, which sounds delightful. This is a bakery with a variety of trees and we received the recommendation from our park goer as we were walking toward the shop to try the caramel popcorn. So we have our bag of Werther's Caramel Popcorn for $6.99. And London is also grabbing a Werther's Salted Pretzel Chocolate Chip Cookie for $4.59, which sounds really good. So we're trying the caramel popcorn now, and, and it does taste really great. Uh, we especially love the chunks of caramel that get captured in the crevices of the popcorn. That's rich, luxurious snacking there. <laughs> as far as the cookie goes, it sounds and looks better than it tastes, in our opinion. Uh, the flavors are definitely there. You can taste the pretzel and the chocolate, uh, but London and I both agree, it just seems to be a bit on the dry side. 
Now to give us something to get excited about, they have oversized pretzels, which are $10, and they are soft and warm, just the way I love them. Um, but my son needs cheese to enjoy his pretzel, and that's in America. Um, we're being told there's no cheese in Germany. <laughs> so we're heading in the opposite direction back to America and it's starting to drizzle on us again. Um, but we're gonna get the necessary cheese dip from Fife and Drum Tavern. Uh, I think it's kind of funny it's in America. Didn't consider America as a mecca for cheese. Thought that was more of a France thing. Uh, unless we're focusing on Wisconsin maybe, I don't know. Uh, anyways, we're gonna start walking again and checking out more of the festival. And everything we just ate in Germany is normally there as part of the World Showcase. We didn't get to try any of their food and wine festival offerings today. We want to, um, but we're going to move on. And we've actually been doing something else other than just eating. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> My son has been on the lookout for Remy. Uh, there's a scavenger hunt around the festival called Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Squeak. The maps can be purchased at some of the merchandise locations. Uh, we don't have a map, but when my son spots Remy, uh, the star of the movie Ratatouille and the new ride we rode today, he calls it out and I do my best to see who he's talking about and get a picture. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to stop in Hawaii because my son really wants to try the passion fruit cheesecake with toasted macadamia nuts for $4.25. Uh, and there's Remy, <laughs> our second sighting of the day. Uh, so back to the cheesecake, uh, we already have it, the lime moves really fast. And it is so cute. And my son says it's really good, especially the passion fruit part. Uh, he did not realize it was gonna be so small though. And I'm telling him, you don't get big luscious pieces of cheesecake for $4, unfortunately. I wish it was like that, but those wishes have not been granted just yet. <laughs> Since my son has dessert, my daughter cannot be outdone. So we're at our next booth, Shimmering Sips, for their Shimmering Strawberry Soft Serve. Uh, London asked for it in a cup and they dunked it upside down, but uh, yeah, there's a picture of how it actually looks. <laughs> the presentation is really cute when it's not upside down, and this is a good amount of ice cream for $5.25. Uh, my son and daughter actually ended up sharing this at the end. And Lun and I are going to share a flight. Uh, this time it's a flight of mimosas for $13. And we have another handy dandy informational card to see what we have to enjoy. We have a blood orange mimosa, key lime mimosa, and tropical mimosa. And it's hard to pick a favorite. It's a close call between the key lime and tropical mimosa. Uh, the blood orange is good, but the key lime and tropical mimosa are just, mmm. <laughs> I tell you, it's a close call. Um, you know, just invite me over and serve either one. I'll be happy. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, London is choosing the key lime as his slight favorite, although he did enjoy all three. We both think this is a great one to try at the festival. One last item we're trying today is at the Noodle Exchange. Uh, this is where London really wanted to go. We all had items we want to try at the festival. So London now has a bowl of traditional spicy Vietnamese beef pho. It has shaved beef, inaki mushrooms, and Thai basil for $5.50. We have a second bowl because my daughter wants to try some. And London says we have a winner. It's tasty, really spicy, and a really filling amount for $5.50. He even says it's shareable. Uh, well, that is all we have for today. There was so much more we wanted to try. We watched a couple of YouTube channels like Disney Food Blog and All Ears to prepare for today. But when we got here, there was so much to try. Uh, we got a little overwhelmed, to be honest. Uh, good news for us, though. The kids enjoyed their day at Epcot, and they want to come back and try more food. And the festival runs until November 20th of this year, so we have lots of time. Hopefully, we can come back and check out more of this festival because they also have entertainment, too. Uh, we had a great day. We really enjoyed the festival and getting the chance to ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. We appreciate your feedback and you letting us know. We appreciate it all. Um, thank you so much for the likes, the comments, and for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Um, next video, we are at our home zoo, um, Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens. Last time we were at the zoo, we were checking out dinosaurs. Uh, and this time we're learning more about our fellow creatures that still walk the planet with us today. We'll be touching stingrays, feeding giraffes, uh, and getting around and exploring a lot of the zoo. Please join us. We would love to have you back. Until next week, click on the video to see another one of our experiences. Thanks for watching.